Hey guys, this is Flocken with Flocken's Necroparlor here. When I left you last time, uh, things were not going so well for me. I'd quit my job, I'd had an accident, um, just having a real bad time. Um, uh, done a lot of work since then, kept myself busy. I haven't had much time for video editing, so I thought I would just do a general workshop update for you guys um see what's going on and what i have in store what's currently stewing brewing what's uh the shows that i'm gonna be a part of coming up here soon i did reserve some booths at some upcoming reptile expos in the salt lake valley so if you've been following me and you're in local to the area you can come and see my shop i'll show you what i've prepared for that First, I have my garage workshop. <sighs> First, you'll notice my workbench um, covered in junk. I got tons of skeletons and bones and uh, legs from the beetles that need to be degreased here in a minute. I do want to showcase my new air conditioner. Um, it's pretty expensive, $300, $350, but it was all I could do to keep this room cold. Um, this, is, this workshop is actually an extension of my garage, which you'll see in a minute, but some idiot put a south-facing window in my garage that makes the whole thing boil at 150 degrees. Uh, so I was constantly getting lethal temperatures for my beetles, but I found that installing this air conditioner keeps at least this room cold enough that my freezer can function normally. This nasty liquid is a, my big bottle of used formalin. Looks nasty because the, the first thing I put in there uh, kind of had a lot of blood in it, which just turned the color. It's fine, I could still reuse it a couple of times. It just looks gross, but you know, it's kind of nasty to make. So reusing what I can as many times as possible is beneficial. Uh, here, I have an entire baby deer. Just fur and bones. Right now all you can see is the fur but uh, oh, an entire skeleton that was a little baby deer just laid down in the grass and died. So I don't know, I'll make something out of that. Maybe one day, maybe I'll just sell it whole. Who knows? Here's the freezer, the freezer, full of amazing things like piles of dead kittens, uh, I keep my snake food in here, rabbit skins. Oh, my air conditioner just kicked off. Got a turtle, everything. I'm not even gonna dig into this. This, there is so much crap in here, you can see. Full to the brim. I mean, I got big adult iguana in there. My personal pet cat is in there. Um, that's where I store all my dead things. Over here, we got some bones in different states of being prepared. I think these look done. No, these look like they need more in the degreaser, some raccoons. I should throw that in right now. <laughs> um, baby raccoon that I'm repairing. This is what happens to possums. Uh, this is a possum from one of my previous videos, and when you degrease them, they completely come apart. I'm still debating if that's going to be worth fixing. Got my bobcats in here. A lot of stuff is just thrown in boxes uh, when I moved, so it still is just in random boxes like this. Like this box, I don't remember what's in it. 
Oh. Oh man, that's more stuff I gotta take care of. I'll show you how busy I am in my workshop later, but um, I got some beaver. There's my badger. Yeah. That's a domestic duck, so someone's pet duck from a farm. Don't call DNR on me. This is just dirt from a terrarium that I cleaned out. Um, on top of this, giant waste of space. Uh, this is a freezer that I acquired for cheap. By cheap, I mean it was free on the side of someone's house at a trailer park, but they said it worked. Uh, so I took it home and I plugged it in. I hauled it in with this and it, it did work. So I filled it full of stuff, snake food, um, beaver skulls that I had, it was just a bunch of stuff. Baby beavers, they crapped out on me. They started to go bad. I lost a lot of specimens. I, you'll see later that I tried to save some for better or worse. Uh, still not, no, don't know what to do with that situation. Here's a bag of bones. These are just mostly rats, some baculums in there. Um, just spare things that I throw in my beetles that I don't particularly care about later. You know, I'm not going to articulate every rat that I throw in there. Um, sometimes I just throw rats in there when my snakes don't eat them and uh, I don't want them to go bad. I can't refreeze them, so I just throw them in there. <clears throat> and here's the beetles. Chowing down on a raccoon. There's the rest of that cat that I've finished. Um, I was hoping to do a compilation video of the cat and all of its parts, uh, but that would require some editing. It's probably ready to go. That might be my next video you guys see. Uh, here's my little pupation houses that I did a video on how to make. The bucket there is just, uh, I cleaned out the freezer not too long ago. I put it all in that bucket with a paper towel, so any bugs that are left in what I cleaned out can escape. Any eggs that were laid can hatch and get out of there um, before I throw all that stuff straight away. So there's a lot of good beetles in there that I don't want to throw in the garbage. This is what I call a cooling rack. So uh, when something down here is finished, like that skull right there, I think it's finished. Yeah, that's pretty finished. I just put it up here. And this has the aluminum tape the beetles can't climb. So over time, they abandon the bones, they fall back down in, and they can't climb back up. So that's one way to get all the beetles out. Like, here's the skull to this cat. All finished. You can see how much plaque was on those teeth. Crazy. And one of its legs is there too. Um, lots of stuff ready. This is a device I used to uh, to water the beetles. Those are like water crystals. Uh, it worked great for watering the beetles. They really liked it. But what I found is that it kept the humidity too high and my humidistat over here was constantly running. Uh, that's, that's, so that's, this is just a humidistat. When the humidity gets too high, it kicks this fan on, it blows the, hot, the, the humid air out. Uh, when that's on all the time, it was drying the meat out really fast. There it goes again. Oh wait, that's the air conditioner. Uh, when the meat dries out really fast, they don't eat it and I have to constantly keep spraying it and it kicks on humidity even more. So um, I, I decided to ex on the water crystals and instead I just put the meat in and I water the meat. Um, they probably get a little less water that way, but it's beneficial for the whole system. I get a lot of questions on how I 
do my time lapses, it's just like this. This is a very expletive, bad uh, GoPro off brand. I think it's called a Dragon Touch 4K or something. Definitely not 4K. Definitely not an action camera by any means. It sucks in every way possible. Um, I did a lot of filming on this and then later found out that all of it was garbage because this camera sucks so bad. But one thing it is good for is to mount on a tripod, don't move, no audio recording, and it can do time lapses at a decent, um, just a, a decent quality for time lapses. I haven't done an in-depth video on my uh, freezer as a whole. I could do that at some point if you guys want. The very first video I ever posted was just me filling it up, but I didn't actually talk about what went into this thing, uh, which was fun. And I might be redoing it again, maybe with that one or something better. Actually, while I'm here, here's my baggie of dirty skulls. I'm gonna empty my cooling rack here. I'll take these to the degreaser, which is what I'm going to show you next. That one's not quite done. I, I could use a soak. There we go. This one was broken up. I'm not gonna put that in here because it'll fall apart. It'll need a special bag. <laughs> that light bulb actually um, is on a switch. So the heaters are on a thermostat. The light is on a switch. So when I'm not filming, uh, I don't need the light. I can just turn it off and the beetles eat a little better when there's no light. They feel more secure, like they're hiding. So probably the two biggest questions that beetle keepers have when they first start is, uh, how do you keep it cool in the summer? The answer is, I, I don't have an answer. I don't have a cheap, easy trick or secret. I just dumped a lot of money on the problem because uh, I almost did lose my entire colony uh, last summer when I could not keep it cool. This thing cools itself when the thermostat gets too high. It cools itself by uh, blowing outside air inside to cool it off. If the outside air is too hot, I'm SOL. So that's one big problem. The other big problem that people have is how do you control the smell? And that is this right here. This, I took the outside label off it's called a bad air sponge. It's literally just, oh, it's uh, activated carbon in some kind of gel. And that's all it is. I mean, I had neighbors threatening to call the police on me, threatening to come over and do despicable things to me. Um, a lot of people, make big expensive rigs with fans and ducts and uh, you know carbon filters the same things you would kind of see in uh, illegal grow tents um, so I was getting ready to do all that in the meantime my wife found this thing bad air sponge you can get it at bed bath and beyond you can get it on Amazon by like a dozen in a pack this is this is I mean, less than five bucks. It might have been three or four dollars. I put this in here as a temporary solution. You just you just open it and you just leave it. No smell within 48 hours. No smell at all. And it's worked so well that I haven't even. I'm not going to make a big rig that's expensive and runs on electricity. Um, this has lasted me about two months, and I cannot recommend it enough. 
Uh, I recently just kind of put it out there in my beetle groups as a miracle cure and everyone's trying it right now so I'm sure we'll get more testimonials. It Again, I took the outside label off but it says right on the label like covers the smell of decomposing bodies. Couldn't make this video revealing all the secrets without the secret behind smell management. So before we move on, uh, one problem with this air conditioner is that it needed to vent the heat. Uh, I wasn't comfortable drilling into an outside wall. I didn't want to run a vent up to my ceiling through the attic or whatever. Um, so what I did was I drilled the wall and it, it vents out of the workshop into the garage. Now, I told you that my garage has a window. It already gets 150 degrees. So now this air conditioner is funneling through it. My garage now gets like 150,000 degrees. It's actually cool right now because uh, we've been having rainstorms the past few days, but I, I'm always opening my garage just to vent the heat from this huge window. But conveniently, conveniently, because it gets so hot in here, uh, I figured it'd be a good spot to put my degreaser tank. Now that's, that's the vent hole for the air conditioner. There was already a hole in the wall here. This is garage. Someone hit that wall, made a hole. Um, so I just expanded the hole. I put some expansion foam down in there. I am still going to insulate it a bit more and uh, do some floor gap, door gap stuff here because it's very inefficient to pump all this heat out only for it to get back in there, make my air conditioner work overtime. Um, but so this is my degreasing operation as you can see that's been in there about a week it's probably time to change but um, when I get a bag full of skulls I just put it in here the secret here it's no secret it's soap and water and time so and okay I guess the secret ingredient here is heat four things so what I do is I put these buckets in uh, this bin of water, attach this big old bucket heater. And the bucket heater, you find it, um, you know, tractor supply, farm stores. They're meant to heat buckets of water for horses to drink. This particular one is auto thermostated, I guess. It heats the water up to like 115 degrees and then shuts off. And that's exactly where I want my water temperature. Um, if you, here's ones that are more finished so they're less greasy than that one. If you look up how to clean skulls on YouTube, you are gonna find a lot of videos by the guy, I forget his name, White Skull Creations or something. I, I forget the exact shop. Don't quote me if I'm wrong. Um, he has the worst methods of cleaning and degreasing possible. He boils the hell out of them until all the meat starts to come off and then he pressure washes the, the crap off of them and then he dunks it in a boiling peroxide. I'm gonna go over why that's awful, but if you want pristine, white, beautiful, undamaged skulls, you're going to degrease them. Uh, you saw how nasty those were. I mean, when I pull them out of the beetles, they're covered in poo. They uh, are yellow or sometimes even red from grease. How do you get out grease? Soap and water. Not damaging, but you have to let it sit long enough for all that grease to leach out. This process takes months. Just months. Some greasier animals like your bears or your wolf any any of the canines maybe a year i mean this takes a while uh, the heat helps but you have to keep the heat under 160 degrees 140 just to be safe if the temperature goes over that that's when the collagen in the bone starts to break down and you're you're going to be left with a brittle um skull that's just gonna make shards 
and come apart. So if you're using a, another heater or a more powerful heater that doesn't have a thermostat on it, you need to hook a thermostat to it so it doesn't get to that, that boiling point where your collagen's gonna start to dissolve. All right, time to show you the inside. Inside the house, we got uh, on this hutch, I usually keep completed projects that are ready to be picked up or sold sometimes, like this chameleon here. If you followed my channel, you've definitely seen videos about this chameleon. Interesting story, I wanted a bug for this animal to be eating in a live action pose, but when I made this, it was in winter, there was no bugs around, so I actually pulled this moth out of my personal uh, insect collection from my entomology class in college. If this has caught your eye, this is something that caught my eye too. I love it. Uh, my friend makes these, Luna Lilith Creations. I saw this and I just had to buy it. Uh, I've been thinking about doing uh, some commissions with her to maybe make some little mini oddity shelves that we could sell. The trick is to finding things that small. I'll show you some of those in a minute. Here are my own personal pieces. This is Stan Lee, my ball python. You probably can't see with that glare. This is the first piece that I ever did when I was in college. This is also my childhood dog, Java the Rottweiler. So I actually just dug up the skeleton and it was, it was already skeletonized. I just had to clean it up. Um, I tell people, you know, I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be able to process my own dogs. Um, I, contrary to YouTube comments, I do have feelings and, uh, there's no way I could do that to my own pets. Probably. I mean, I did it to Stan Lee. It's a little different than this dog right here. Good girl. All right, go on. I also have a number of pieces here that, oh, there's another one of these. I requested one that was blank just so I could uh, practice like drilling holes in it, um, lighting it, things like that, just so we could place products in it. Here's some more completed pieces. Some you might have seen, some you might have not. Um, I kind of wanted to hang these on the wall, but I... I'm going to be boofing here soon, and so I might just store them until it's time to sell them. Here's my ball python triplets, acquired from a breeder that didn't make it. Um, this is the first time I'd ever really mummified anything, so it's a little skewampy, and then uh, baby skeletons are really hard. But I just loved the idea of this piece to have mummified and then a skin to mummified and a skeleton. This is my red tail boa. I probably posted three videos on that one. Still not sold, um, but I have high hopes. This boa came from the Wasatch Exotics Rescue. It was given to them and they were unable to save it. So I took it after that. Every animal I get from the Exotics Rescue I split profits with them. So, you know, by purchasing this, you're helping animals in the future get better care. And this is an idea I've been working on. I don't think I've shown this yet. Um, but essentially it's an instant oddity cabinet. Every time I make something that has multiples, I grab one of those multiples and I stick it in here. Like here's um, some wet specimen corn snakes that I got. Um, but one day I hope to finish this and then uh, maybe sell it as an instant oddities cabinet for someone who wanted a lot of small things at once. The hard part is to find things that are that small. Like even my vials don't really fit in there. Um, so it's it's kind of fun and interesting just to see what tiny little things. That's a um, a bunny tail. Uh, I think that's a pair of dog testicles. We got some kitten fetuses up here. Just, just things. Everything that I make.
grab these dishes on the way back downstairs. Hey guys, this video is getting entirely too long. So if you would like to descend into my dungeon and see my indoor workshop where I do my wet specimens, store all of my completed projects, and I spill all the secrets to my diaphanization process, as well as share some of my biggest mistakes, tune in next week. I'll make a part two to continue hyping for these reptile expos that I'll be boothing at. So see you then. But, you know, I'm not going to charge anything because um, there's not much you can do. No secrets, just it is what it is. Uh, I was very grateful for her to be so kind. <laughs> uh, but let me show you what, what I got coming up now. I don't know if the camera will pick up the computer screen, but I got new merch coming out. I'm getting um, vinyl cut to put on a car. This is gonna be my new banner. It's gonna be above my booths at the upcoming Reptile Expos. And this is my new line of stickers. Way improved. Super awesome. Very nice. And I cannot wait to get them and put them on things and sell them. I'm using this to cover my emails back and forth between my uh, graphic designer. She's printing these right now. I mean, they're, they're on their way to being here. Also, this is a new thing that I got, and I love it. You've probably seen this before. Might need to charge. But it's a square terminal. I'm so glad I spent the extra money on this. Um, even though it's not turning on. Yeah, okay. Obviously, it probably needs to charge. Um, but the reason it's so amazing is, unlike your normal mag strip reader that plugs into your phone, um, it takes chip, mag strip, has a tap pay, and it has a printer, prints receipts. I love it. I wish I could show you a receipt right now because um, I put my logo on it. It looks really spiffy. It also has my phone number on it. Um, so I'm not going to show it to you, but super excited. I cannot wait to use this at the booth that I'll be at this next month. Also, I have a friend who has started doing this amazing artwork. And I loved it so much, I definitely want to make stickers out of these. I don't know if you can tell, there's actually a silhouette around the skeleton. Uh, so that's another thing I like to do. If I have friends that make something that's really cool that I want, I'll say, hey, I'll make that into a sticker. You get the majority of the profits, but I want to support you as an artist and help you make money. I'm all about that. If you can doodle dope things that you think would be a good sticker, send it my way. If you make vibe and background music, send me a message, let me know. I'm always looking for more background music for my videos. This one probably won't have any because of the absurd amount of talking. I've missed a lot of opportunities recently uh, to make videos. I passed my one year YouTube anniversary. I passed my 1000 subscriber anniversary. Um, but I think I just hit some more milestones. I think this month is my my 18 month, my year and a half YouTube anniversary. And since my last video, I just hit 2,000 subscribers, which is absurd to me. This is awesome. Um, this is just a glimpse at some of my analytics. I really don't care if people see what's going on behind my videos. Um, I'll fully admit that most of my views come from this one video. The, no denying it. More views than every other one of my videos combined, which is, I'm fine with that. It got me where I am. Um, I was able to monetize. I'm, I've made a couple of bucks here over the past few months since I've been monetized. This is the past 90 days. So if we go all time, uh, I just passed quarter of a million views. My subscribers are 2,000. That is amazing to me. I have had a steady climb of subscribers ever since I started, and I'm at 2,000. Do you know what that means? That means in 50 years, 
I can put a plaque on my wall that says I got 100,000 subscribers. Which would be awesome, but I bet we could go faster than that. As you can see by this graph, it's growing faster over time. Uh, the subscribers have been pretty steady, but still growing over time. So what I'm trying to say is give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Share it everywhere. I don't think this video was too graphic. Normally, I, I don't say, you know, share this with everyone you know because not everyone's into graphic bloody meat being devoured by bugs. As, as stated in my multitude of YouTube comments of angry people. Um, but in this case, this is an actual advertisement. I invested a lot of money into that little printer, into these banners, stickers, um, booth space, and I'm about to put myself out there and I wanna see you and I wanna see all of your friends. I wanna see all of your family. I wanna see everyone you know come and visit me at these booths. I want to clear house, sell out everything I got to make space to make more things. I'm gonna work my butt off. You did. You probably didn't even see half of the skulls that I got lying around that need to be put together. Um, you definitely didn't see all those wet specimens. I just bought $300 worth of jars and I'm realizing I might need a lot more than that. So I'm taking the leap since quitting my job. I'm really putting myself out there and I need your help. So please come to my shows. Speaking of those shows, let me show you. Reptilian Nation Expo, Salt Lake City Metro, end of the month, 28th, 29th. Mountain American Expo Center. I'll be there. But also, so that's the end of August, beginning of October, Wasatch Reptile Expo. I love this expo. I've gone every year that I've been in the state of Utah. I've gotten a lot of my personal pets from here. I absolutely love them. And I'll be super excited to join them. This one is at the Utah State Fair Park. There's the address. It's October 2nd and 3rd. That's it for this one. Be sure to tune in next week where I will show you more of my workshop and the secrets hidden within.